the thousand years called the Middle Ages had massive technological advances, including the printing press, universities, advanced metallurgy, improved transportation, including ships capable of sailing across the oceans, banking, and financial innovations. Europe made progress despite the church, feudalism, and kings. Gutenberg's printing press promoted literacy. A scientific revolution started with Copernicus, Kepler, Galileo, and Newton. Add Enlightenment philosophers, newspapers, joint stock companies, tinkerers able to make a buck, and the potential for massive trade. Then move west to Holland and England. Historian William Bernstein hypothesized that four requirements were necessary. Property rights and rule of law, effective capital markets, scientific rationalism, and efficient transportation and communication. Surprisingly, the successes were the pragmatic Dutch province, Holland, and that always at war country, England. Start with Holland. Apparently, when a dinky province has to hold back the sea just to have any land at all, there was a tenacity to succeed. Scientific rationality and property rights became important. With no large central government, raising funds required capital market innovations, including the joint stock company. England seemed to have luck, great timing, pragmatic people, a willingness to copy innovative Holland, and a dependable legal system. Common law was a bottoms-up approach the Normans adapted from the Anglo-Saxons. Property rights and rule of law were fundamental despite kings claiming divine rights. Joint stock companies meant that entrepreneurs provided the money and took all the risks. Craftspeople were essential in cities, including butchers, bakers, brewers, blacksmiths, and weavers. Merchants were required to move goods and ideas. Machinery started with water wheels, used actively in the Middle Ages, especially for milling. Writing in that revolutionary year, 1776, Smith's Wealth of Nations introduced the importance of specialization using the example of making pins. Apparently, he cribbed the example from Diderot's encyclopedia, which was based on French practices. Actually, British pin manufacturing used water wheels to make the process even more efficient. Historian Charles Morris noted that England had capital to invest and that British wages in 1800 were the highest in Europe. Efficient production in both agriculture and manufacturing would cut total labor costs. High wages seems counterintuitive given the low pay and poor conditions factory workers faced across England as described by Charles Dickens and Karl Marx, but it's relative. French industry had less incentive to invest in efficient machinery. Wages in America were much higher than England. U.S. incentives were for high labor productivity. However, the country lacked capital. Machinery expanded with textiles. At first, it was small looms and spinning wheels used in homes with merchants accumulating finished products, moving the process to completion. Machinery for more efficient weaving and spinning happened slowly with many of the inventors competing with others with similar ideas. From ideas, machinery had to be built, then determining the processes to use the machinery efficiently. The evolution of factories started with textiles. 
Textile manufacturing required four steps, preparing cotton for spinning, spinning into thread or yarn, weaving the yarn into cloth, and finishing the cloth for clothing and other products. Spinning and weaving were the primary areas for sophisticated machinery. Inventors continually improved machines throughout the 18th century and beyond. With little lumber, England turned to coal, which the country had in abundance, initially used for heating and metallurgy. One problem was water accumulating in coal and other mines, initially bailed out by hand. Primitive steam engines were built specifically to drain the water, then improved as wider uses were found for steam engines. It's time to watch the inventors get their hands dirty inventing the machines that drove the Industrial Revolution and made giant leaps in productivity. A never-ending process. Next time on Food History and Mystery.